It's Madden NFL 24, and we've got a showdown in the AFC South. It's the Indianapolis Colts and the Jacksonville Jaguars coming up next. Now the humidity is still a factor on this fall afternoon, but no rain in the forecast. That's the good news as you look inside Everbank Stadium here in Jacksonville. Today it's an intra-division matchup in the AFC South as it'll be the Indianapolis Colts taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars. Brandon Gordon joined as always by Charles Davis. But Charles, a lot of optimism here in the Sunshine State about these Jaguars. They're the defending AFC South champs. They won a playoff game last year and gave the Chiefs all they could handle in the divisional round. And last season was seen as one where they were just gonna try and rebuild and regroup. And they did all of those things and then exceeded expectations. Quietly, they've amassed a lot of talent and they expect to make another run in their division. And meanwhile, for the Colts, it's been a pretty hard fall the last couple of years. From 11 wins in 2020 to just four a season ago, how do they get back on the right path? I think they've started back on the right path with the change in the coaching staff, but a lot of it, players already on the roster playing back to the levels we've seen before. about ready to get us started and off we go from Jacksonville from his end zone Isaiah McKenzie and tackled at the 21 yard line so a net negative there of four yards and now a stoppage and looks like we have a Colt who was shaken up on that last play while they come out and take a look at him we will step aside for just a moment In motion, the tight end. Here's Zach Moss, who played high school football downstate near Miami. And he works his way forward to pick up four yards there, second down. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. yards that time able to take off and the result is a first down Brandon you know I'm all about quarterbacks protecting themselves but I have to admit it I liked what I just saw there that rookie wasn't afraid of absorbing a big hit now you don't want to see him taking those shots all game long but he picked up the first down kept fighting for yards and was willing to embrace some contact to keep the play moving they'll run on first down with Moss and he can only manage to get a couple second and eight coming up well, they always talk about playing great team defense, and that was an excellent example right there. Everyone on assignment, no one in the wrong spot, everyone filling their gaps. From the 35, here's a second and eight. And they'll go to the air now with Richardson. And that one incomplete, but now a penalty flag coming in late. That might be P.I. So the contact came before the ball got there, and the flag is thrown. Timing is everything, isn't it? And it's so hard to cover these great receivers. They have such great body control, and they can fake you out. In this case, as you described, got there before the ball got to the receiver. Penalty flag had to come out. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be. But still, all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. Here's second and seven. From the shotgun, Richardson. And that nearly an interception here on his opening drive, but he gets a reprieve. It's third down. Well, I'd say a couple people didn't get the read correct, huh? Zone coverage, linebacker dropped right into the proper spot. 
Lucky that one wasn't picked off. He was looking directly in his eyes as he threw the football, and you're right, it was telegraphed, probably should have been picked. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line, tackled there. Give him 10 that time, escaping the danger, running with it, and picking up a first down. As we both know, there's a lot that went into why they made him their first round pick this year. And part of it was what they saw in college, his playmaking ability when things break down. As soon as he saw he wasn't getting a lane to throw, he pivoted and found an alternate way to the marker. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. Ball on the 35, here comes second and five. Richardson working from the gun. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26 yard line. A good decision in the end to pull it and run, get some nine yards and a first. But Charles, in the past, a lot of people called this offense one-dimensional. I think but, you did. Well, I think it was you. I'll be honest, I did. <laughs> I think the fan base is hoping with this young rookie that they can put some wrinkles in this offense like we just saw. I think you're exactly right because we did have that discussion that what we've seen in the past. And got his man complete. Got a man. It's Pittman, and he holds it in for the Colts touchdown. A great play there. 26 yards and the Colts get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon they gotta love that nine play drive results in six points that means they're doing the dictating that means that they've described how the game's going to go they're playing at their tempo at their pace if you're on the other side of the ball if you're playing defense defense is not methodical they've got to go in there and shake things up and create a little havoc Extra point by Gay is up and good. And that makes the score 7-0. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. Oh, a good return up past the 30. And all in all, a pretty solid return. Nearly got it to the 35. They'll mark him down officially at the 34. That didn't take long to see our first penalty of the game, did it? We always talk about everyone wanting to get into the game in a hurry. The officials did as well. So the special teams penalty cost some yardage there as they come out on first and 10. ETN up the middle. And he'll be tackled at the 23 after a gain of three. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out. And they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. Now second and seven from the 23. Another toe for ETN. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. A big chunk on the ground there, 27 yards. Good, strong, explosive run that started inside which means you've got to control those defensive linemen, the defensive tackles, the nose guards. Those guys have to be controlled. How about the offensive line, the job they just did? Yeah, key that A-gap usually on those runs, right? That's where it all starts because everyone wants to kind of control that area. It disrupts things from the defensive side and the offensive side. As we just saw, it opens up possibilities. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to spring the tight end free downfield for the completion. From the 44 now, here's second and four. Here's Lawrence. A short throw to Ingram, and he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. 11 yards there for Jacksonville and a first down as well. They're gonna empty the backfield here, so you know this ball's likely to come out quick. 
They let the four outside receivers run deeper routes and then let the tight end just make a beeline across the formation. He's able to make the catch and turn it into good yardage and a first down. On first and 10, it's ETN. What a great effort there. He's going to get this inside the 15, and they'll spot it at the 13-yard line. Nice run. 49 yards rushing so far, and this is just their first possession. They've got a new set of downs here. Quite the opening drive march they're on right now. It looks a lot like what we saw in practice prior to the game, doesn't it? You know, because on that last big practice beforehand, you go through your offensive script, you go through your play calling, you go through all the stuff and establish things, and it looks like it's going like clockwork right now for them. Under pressure, and he'll go down back at the 26-yard line. Credit the sack to the Oregon Duck to Forrest Buckner. Well, many times when you talk about mobile quarterbacks, you get the sense that they feel like they can get out of any bad situation. They keep moving around and trying to emulate guys like the Scrambler or the Dodger. Instead, they keep losing yardage and losing yardage and digging themselves a hole that they can't get out of. Now then, after the sack, it'll be interesting to see what they have planned for second and 23. From the shotgun, Lawrence. And he'll slide to a halt here. Still a little shy of the first down marker. He'll end up getting five out of that, but now they're looking at third down. I certainly like what he did right there because he smartly wanted to avoid forcing anything downfield because nothing appeared to be open. Nice harmless slide there to avoid the big hit, and he gets a small gain on the play. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Touchdown, Jaguars! 21 yards away. And the Jaguars are able to match the opening drive touchdown against them with one of their own. As a general rule, quarterbacks don't want to lock in on a receiver before the ball is snapped. But in this case, based on the matchup he thought he was going to get, it was favorable for his tight end. He locked in on him early and found him for a touchdown. On here, Brandon McManus for the point after. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter, and we're tied 7-7 here as the kick's away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Second drive coming up here for the Indianapolis Colts. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out looking to repeat that in Charles' defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated, they both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. And they'll begin by running the option. And they work this well upfield across the 45. An excellent run of 22 yards on the keeper and also a first down. It looked like almost a miscommunication defensively because once he decided to keep it, he had pretty smooth sailing. Yeah, it became a question of, wait a minute, who's got the quarterback? And when you talk about miscommunication, it's supposed to be called assignment football on the defensive side of the ball. But the assignment gets mixed up. That's the end result. And he's going to take this across midfield into Jacksonville territory. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. Good yardage there on first down. Exactly what you want. Get yourself set up to keep making first downs. Keep the clock running. And if they're smart, you're starting to milk the clock. No hurry before you run your second down play. On second down, it's Moss again. And he'll get it down here to the 43. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. But, partner, if the defense isn't going to adjust and they keep giving them those five, six, seven-yard runs over and over, 
They're likely to run it the whole way to the end zone. They'll be more than happy to take the yardage available and save some of their other plays in the playbook for another time. They'll go again here with Moss. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight yard gain, second and two. The success there, Charles, coming on the outside of the field, the ground game. Curious to see if that continues as we progress. Yeah, we often talk about a variety in play calling and usually between run and pass. But in this case, with strictly the run game, you can be creative there as well. Run it inside, run it outside, keep the defense off balance. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. Nice job there defensively to clamp down because really they've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at him. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy set the tone early, running through all types of tackles and put the defense back on its heels. All runs on this drive so far. It's first and ten. Signed to 10 to the 7. Another nice gain. 16 yards there and a first down again. With these run pass options, we often talk about a good quarterback and running back. Well, having a talented wide receiver helps also. Yeah, even coming in third in the discussion, sometimes that means he really should be first because all you want to do is get the ball in their hands and let them make the big plays downfield. And he takes this one in for a Colts touchdown. Anthony Richardson taking it in from seven yards away. And the Colts have taken the lead. And this is a balancing act for a head coach with a rookie quarterback. You've got to walk a line with him. You don't want him getting happy feet, but you also don't want to rein in what worked for him in college. And here, he pulls it down, takes it himself, and takes it into the end zone. Extra point by Gay is up and good. And that makes the score 14 to 7. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. And able to get this out to the 25. So time to see Jacksonville again on offense for the second time here in this game. And it's a unit last drive that did it all on the ground, Charles. And they controlled it from the interior, big on big, right? Offensive lineman versus defensive lineman. But you know, in order to keep the football moving downfield, other people have to get involved as well. Your wide receivers, your tight ends, lead runners, anything that you have possible to get in front and keep the ball moving. And now the defense may be looking out for a pass coming up. They'll start on the ground, ETN. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. It's a loss of four on the first down play. I really like what he did there because he took his practice work and converted it to game action because he used his hands, got off the block, worked laterally and stayed to the outside, and finished off the runner for a loss. On second down, ETN once more. And they'll get to him quickly here as he'll get a yard, just a yard to the 22. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big bodied guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. Through one corner, 14 7, our score. 
second quarter now from Jacksonville, and it's the Jags with the football. And not an easy spot here. They'll be in search of 13 yards to try to pick up the first. Now Lawrence on third and long. Airing it out, looking for Ridley. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. And that is how you respond after taking one on the chin to begin this game. Give up a first drive touchdown, go back out on defense, and completely shut them down to force a three and out. So on fourth down, here's Logan Cook to punt for Jacksonville. Back deep for the Colts, Isaiah McKenzie. And he'll get this away into the humid Florida sky. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And right now they're saying, hey, let's keep this going. Two drives, two touchdowns. Yeah, can't ask for a better start than that, can you? I mean, this is the way you practice it. This is the way you rehearse it. But right now, the play calling, they're locked in really well. And they'll run the option to start the drive. Richardson hit and he fumbles it. But it looks like one of the DBs has it. And they'll start with great field position at the 41-yard line. He was having success there, holding on to it on the option, but ultimately problems downfield, and it results in a turnover. Yeah, and this is a tough one because you know you'd prefer to have your quarterback either heading to the sidelines or getting down at the end of the play. But you've got an aggressive one. He's fighting for extra yardage, and he gets stripped there. You don't need him to be a hero in that situation. You want your quarterback taking care of himself. Straight ahead, ETN. And he'll be stopped at the 35, but not before he picks up seven yards. But no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Here's second and three. Out of the gun, it's Lawrence. Complete to Jones. And they eventually get to him at the 17 after a pickup of 17 into the red zone. First down. Well, that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. On first down, Lawrence. Open man right side is Ingram. And he's got this inside the 10 to the 9 before he's out of bounds. So the completion results there in 9 yards. And that'll give him a short yardage situation here for second down. Now Lawrence. A quick throw there he is incomplete. So it looked like maybe his third or his fourth read on his progression. Just trying to find his outlet man that time. Ends up leading him just a bit too much. They tried to throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. Here's Lawrence to throw. Touchdown! Zay Jones, a nine-yard touchdown. The Jaguars are an extra point away from evening this one up. Now McManus to tack on the extra point. And we've got a good one brewing. We're all knotted up at 14. The drive summary that time, five plays. And it results in a touchdown for Jacksonville. Now 
This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. McKenzie now from his end zone. And the Colts getting ready to go. Last time out, they had the fumble. That led to the touchdown. Not a great look on either side of the ball as the defense gave up the points to Charles, but they've got to take care of the football and do better here on this possession. It's certainly been a tough stretch partner for both of those units, and they kind of put their defensive mates in a really tough spot there by dropping the ball on the ground. But an easy way to make it up to them, get out there now and get some points on this drive. On first down, they'll start out with Moss. Now he'll get this one way up just shy of the 45-yard line. 68 yards rushing for him as he has been tough to stop here this first half. What I continually hear from running backs and offensive linemen is how often they're actually getting together to watch film so they can get in sync with each other, understand blocking patterns better, how a running back likes to cut, what he wants to do. And boy, it all came together on that one. That's one where they watch it and say, hey, we, we did everything we were supposed to do right there. That looked like the play we drew up and designed. And then we got to see it unfold in real time. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it a combined 33 yards. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 46. Now Richardson. That is caught, Michael Pittman with it. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. 23 yards on the play. Well, it certainly doesn't matter if it's been through the air like on this play or on the ground. I don't know what's going on with this defense. In a sense, they've been AWOL on this drive so far. Three plays, three first downs given up. They've got to find the answers, and they've got to find them quick. On first down, Richardson. And this ball incomplete. Uh, looked very much to be a catchable ball and could not hang on. Second down coming up. Everything about that play tells you about today's NFL offenses and what they're asking out of running backs. You can't just be a guy who can run the football. You have to be able to catch it as well. And he didn't get that done on that play. Again, it's Richardson. Eluding the pressure right. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Josh Allen able to drop him for a loss of a couple. Four seasons in the league, and he will be addition to the number one overall pick to his defense last year. Allen remained the face of the Jaguars' pass rush. Again, led his team with seven sacks and a career high four force fumbles. On third down, here's Richardson. And the pressure gets to him again. Brought down by Trayvon Walker on the pass rush. Walker was drafted because of his tools and potential down the line. A little bit of a slow start to his career. Only three and a half sacks as a rookie. The key for everyone in Jacksonville, just stay patient. He's got a chance to develop into something big. And Gay knocks this one through. And they take a 17-14 lead. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks, you tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal, you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And no return here for Agnew, so they'll bring it out, start the drive at the 25. The Jags offense now gets set and heads back onto the field. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. Then confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. Now ETN to start the drive. And yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. 
Not a huge play, but I think they're more than happy with how it turned out. Don't be surprised to see them revisit that call because there was a lane there for more than just five yards. Put it in your back pocket and break it out when you need it later. Ball on the 30, they'll come up with a second and five. ETN once more. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. 70 yards now for ETN, and he's got a first down. We often give credit to the O-line there. Two tight end formation. Those tight ends block pretty well also. Yeah, and that's one of the most dynamic positions in football now. The tight ends who can block at the line of scrimmage at the point of attack, and they can also get downfield and catch the football. Throwing now, Lawrence on first down. Gets this quickly to Ingram. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches, as we just saw him do there, because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days, but you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target, and that's how he'll shred a defense. A little bit of daylight on that first down run sets him up nicely. Eight yards on the carry. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. Second and a couple. A handoff running left is ETN. And this time not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. Four yards the pickup, first down. Well, we always talk about good down and distance allowing offenses to expand their playbook. Well, second and two, that means your playbook's wide open. You can run just about anything. But a lot of times, the play caller, he just looks down at his sheet, sees the short yardage runs, and goes to one of those. Now Lawrence on first down. Oh, it's intercepted. He was trying to get it to Ridley. Picked off by Juju Brents. And the Colts are going to get the football back at their own 17. Well, these defensive coaches, they sure like what they've got in this rookie corner. And with good reason, as you saw there. He only cost him a day two pick, and a lot of people thought he had first-round ability. But when he was available on draft night, that was one where you didn't need the full time to make the selection. You call that pick in early, and he shows why he was so coveted with that interception there. Zach Moss heading out to lead this offense. And he's well on his way to a 100-yard game. He's already more than halfway there. We're only in the second quarter. And what I've always loved about running backs is they'll tell you, I had no idea how many yards I had. Right. Those guys have an innate <laughs> sense of where they are in a ball game and how many yards they've accumulated because you know they're always working towards 100. He's been working well towards 100 here. They'll start with the option. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. A little do-it-yourself run right there and a nice game. And I like that he knew that that was about all he was going to get. So he did a nice job of protecting himself, took care of the football, took what the defense gave him. If they continue to allow him to do that, they'll find their way taking what they can all the way to the end zone. And motioning left, that's Pittman. They'll fake it on the jet sweep, and instead, a handoff up the middle. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because it's usually five on three. And when they do their job well, guys who play on the inside, those inside linebackers, they will just roam and hit. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to convert, albeit not by much, on third and a yard. So that was all you're looking for on a play like that. Get the first down and keep the drive moving. Yeah, it just looked to me like he just said to himself, I've got this. I'll take it. I'll pick it up and let's keep moving. Get the first down, get a new set, and let's start over. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Had an open man that time. They ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Now a second and ten.
Now Richardson, he's going to keep it running right. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. Now that's what he can do you know, when he keeps the football. It's not a huge gain, but it shows how hard it can be to stop him. Yeah, and I thought the defense had that one pretty well contained. And in fact, they probably came up and felt pretty good about what they did. Then they looked up and realized he still got good yardage out of it. He's a tough guy to stop. Now it's Richardson. They'll run the screen with Moss. And it was the stiff arm there that freed him enough to get the first before he's tackled. Move the chains, a gain of seven on third down. And this pass rush has really been bringing the heat and has already gotten home a few times here in the first half. So how about the play call there? Sometimes if you can't protect, you've got to fool them. Screen passes like that can take a little steam out of what's been a relentless rush so far. A running play here on first down is going to go nowhere as he is tackled behind the line of scrimmage. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Behind the chain, second and 13. Back to throw. Here's Richardson. And he fumbled it. It's on the ground. But it looks like one of the DBs has it. And they take possession two yards away from midfield at the 48-yard line. We know he's got the speed to get downfield, Charles, but there's the negative side, a little loose with the football that time. And that's normal, especially when you have his type of talents because you feel like you're into the open field and maybe you don't feel the people who are around you or closing in. All quarterbacks have to do extra ball security drills with the way the game's played now because defenses, they attack the football as much as they attack the runner. Following the fumble recovery, Lawrence throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. That's tremendous field position that they were given following the turnover, but they've still got work to do to get the field goal range, and the coverage we're seeing isn't going to make it easy. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Now Lawrence to throw. And on the left sideline, he caught but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete. So the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. This defense has passed its first two tests by forcing back-to-back -back incompletions. They know that there's probably another throw coming on third down. Let's see if they decide to force the issue by sending people on a blitz. On third down, Lawrence. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have a Jaguars first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. We didn't need to ask around the league, but we got to confirm this guy's a good player. They've got to find a way to get him more involved, call a few more plays that target him. Absolutely, because here we are toward the end of the first half, and that's the first target, not just the first catch, first target. Lawrence going to throw again. He completes it to Ridley. Touchdown, Jaguars! Jaguars have taken the lead. When we draw defenses on the board, we do account for every receiver. But on that particular play, somehow he was wide open, became an easy touchdown pass. McManus now for the extra point. It's up and good to make it 21-17. A drive there of just four plays. And it's Calvin Ridley who finishes it off with a touchdown reception. the touchdown here's McManus now to kick it away McKenzie now from his end zone 
And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. And he's set to go on offense once more. And looking at this situation, Charles, you got more than a minute. You've got all three timeouts. Probably no need to play this safe. So what you're saying is that we're doing a little bit of a mind meld here, aren't we? Because I'm thinking along the same lines as you. This amount of time, don't be compelled to play it too safe. This is a chance to get points on the board. Press it a little bit. And especially since a touchdown here gets you the lead. Richards into the air on first down. Oh, and the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. I think he had to unload that one before he wanted to. He was right up in his grill. I think he was a dentist there without a license, don't you? <laughs> Just not enough time for the play to develop. Just lucky it wasn't a fumble, really. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Richardson looking to throw. Pass complete downfield. It's Pierce. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. 22 yards there, a first down. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. First and 10, it's Richardson. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. Back to the air with Richardson. And an incomplete pass. back-to-back -back plays defensively. They're stacking momentum now. One incompletion, two incompletion. They're going for more. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Richardson looking to throw this. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. Well, as my dad would say sometimes, I'm just scratching my head here trying to figure out what was going on there defensively. How did you lose him in the middle of the field? If you're going to lose a receiver, make sure it's someone on the short side of things, not deep downfield, that can hurt your defense. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. There, Richardson back to throw it. That's complete to Pierce. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. That's over 40 yards of movement with those last two plays. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. Richardson. On oh, the throw, let him too much that time. It's incomplete. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss it? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points. Go by the wayside on that one. And that is caught. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Isaiah McKenzie, a 15-yard touchdown grab. And the Colts will take the lead here in the final minute of the first half. There was a lot of zip on that pass, and baseball might have called that a frozen rope. I like it when you bring the diamond into the game. I'm going back to the gridiron. Had some heat on that bad boy. Sometimes you throw a touchdown pass, and sometimes... And we remember, of course, all scoring plays need to be verified upstairs, and I think they're going to at least take a look at this. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. 
How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. So take away the touchdown there as that's going to be ruled an incomplete pass. It's been a pretty long drive. This will be play number nine, and they need 10 yards out of it on third. Here's Richardson to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. So another incompletion there. He's hitting on fewer than half his pass attempts in this one, and that is not a winning formula. Yes, yeah, so let's make sure we give a little bit of credit to the defense here. They've given him a lot to think about, a lot of different looks, and he seems a little bit confused trying to complete passes. Gay's kick is good, and that'll bring him back within a point. So the three points here, they're still down, but they put somewhat of a dent into that lead going into the break. Anything helps when you're trying to chip away at a lead, but they do know that they're going to need a little bit better effort in the second half. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. The Jacksonville offense set to begin their next drive. And with a one-point lead, you'd have to think they'll be looking just to get this to halftime. And they're just going to run it here up the middle. And defensively, they're just looking to keep him contained as they're able to get him down. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. So we've reached halftime in a wild first half. We'll take a minute to catch our breath. As we now go downstate to Orlando and check in with Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, back to you too in just a bit. But first, welcome everyone to downtown Orlando and our EA Sports Halftime Report. In the first half, we saw a strong outing from Trevor Lawrence. He threw a first quarter touchdown pass, then two more in the second quarter, a three touchdown half. And he may just be getting started. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. From his end zone, here comes Agnew. And this return will net positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. Out come the Jaguars now as he'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. But Charles, for them, pretty good first half on the ground. They had some success running the ball in quarters one and two, and they've got the lead now, a chance to expand upon that lead here with their first drive in the third quarter. Yeah, believe it or not, you and I have noticed that this great game of football has shifted towards pass first, run second. So for me, it's really nice to see some of these teams keeping the ground game as a big component of their offense, and it's working pretty well for them now. And let's face it, they can continue to do damage with it. And in addition, it sets up the pass game really well for them, too. DeForest Buckner using that size to force his way in there and make the stop behind the line. And that's what this defense is going to need to do more in the second half. Good pressure that time, forces some indecision in the backfield. He's going to wind up being taken down for a nice loss. Lawrence. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Not his best throw there, but where we sit right now in the third quarter, he's had a pretty good game throwing the football. He certainly has, and it's not exactly at the point where we're doing four-minute offense yet, but they've got to think about, I'm not going to say milking the clock, but understanding clock management here on out. 
Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And that will be incomplete. And so many times we look at the opening drive in the third quarter as a tone setter, and many coaches do emphasize it. And that's a strong performance there defensively to force the incompletion, and more importantly, force a quick punting situation. Here's Logan Cook now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. McKenzie now to return it. It'll be a net of only 30 here. 40-yard punt, 10 on the return. And they will take over first and 10. Here's the Colts now as they get ready for their first possession on offense of the second half. Good starting field position for the Colts as they have it first and 10 at their own 42. And they'll begin by running the option. And a pretty good burst there as he'll get this across midfield and down to the 46. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. Well, with him trailing here in the second half, maybe his legs can try to give this offense a spark. And that's the benefit of having a young quarterback, right? Having a rookie, a guy who will say, hold on a second, I have a little bit of fearlessness to my game. It isn't working as well the other way. Let's see what I can do to help my team this way. And boy, he did it there. And he is going to lose yardage here. All around great play by Devin Lloyd, using his athleticism to get to the backfield and his strength to stop him for a loss. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. You know the converse is, though? You've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks, and when you don't, that's the result you end up with. Barney sold the go route really well. Thought he was going deep, then curled it back inside for a nice completion. DBs love when they pump the brakes, don't they? Yeah, that's really, that's really a whole lot cool. of fun. It's almost like you said, listen, if you're going to sell the go, just go. Well, let's see who's faster. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. They'll try and run for this with Moss. And he is going to have a Colts first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert there on third and one. That's a tremendous group effort there because when you talk about offensive lines, the best ones, talk about guys that play in harmony, in sync, and getting things done, and they did that on that play. Yeah, especially on third and one. Got to be in sync, and they were. First down, they stay with Moss on the ground. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. Richardson now on second down. And that one off the mark behind him, incomplete. Not sure what happened there, but he just didn't get the right read on the coverage that time. Pass wasn't where it needed to be, and that will send them back to the drawing board. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Now Richardson. That is caught, and he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 23. The drive stays intact with a pickup of 13. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going, and if points result, we'll call this play significant. On the handoff, running left, Moss. And he is going to lose yardage here. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. That's about as good as a linebacker can diagnose that play, isn't it? It certainly is, and what he did really well is that while he was diagnosing, he got his feet in motion without actually going anywhere and taking a false step that he had to make up later. He read it, got his feet in motion, and then he just took off and made the play. Play action. Now Richardson. That's going to be caught. And they are able to stop him, but he does take it all the way to the two. 
Last play, they got stuffed at the line. Different story here, over 20 yards. And I'll tell you what, this offense is playing a little bit of keep away right now. They've come out here in the third quarter, possessed the ball for quite a while, and they keep on converting. Nice pitch and catch there to set up the first and goal. On first and goal, they'll try the option left. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Anthony Richardson. Scoring on the two-yard keeper. And the Colts have retaken a third-quarter lead. We've seen this already from him in this game. Second time, he's into the end zone with a rushing touchdown. So the head coach is going to have to have a meeting with the owner this week. You know why? He's got to let the owner know, I know you wrote the check for his arm, but we're going to make him a part of our running game, too. This guy can do it all. Let's see where he takes us. And he will find the end zone here, and the lead moves up to seven. And with a successful two-point try, the QB rolling out, I would imagine, on the defense, that makes it tough. When you, he goes out, he's got the option to run or pass. Yeah, it really does. If you decide not to bring extra people or extra pressure, maybe you have to have a spy on the quarterback, someone to account for him, because oftentimes, that is the unaccounted for a player. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Jacksonville set to go again offensively. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. Meanwhile, Lawrence's throw here into the hands of Jones. Now inside the 25, Zay Jones, touchdown, Jaguars. Zay Jones with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Jags are within an extra point of tying up this ball game. I know Paul Revere talked about by land or by sea, right? You know, one by land, two by sea. He didn't mention air because right now we're seeing a big-time performance, aren't we? That's two touchdowns so far in this game. Where'd you pull that one from? And, you know, every now and then I actually listened in history class. <laughs> and you, you're just a scholar all the way around. You're reading all the time. I like that you fit that in the podcast. <laughs> you know, I just grab a nugget when I can. Extra point from McManus is good. And we are all tied at 28. Square one, tied at 28 as he kicks it away. Returning it, Isaiah McKenzie. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Here comes the Colts offense now as they make their way onto the field. And their lead has evaporated in this third quarter. It's tied once more as they begin with a first and 10. Richardson out of the shotgun. That one finds Pierce right side. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. Ten yards there to start the drive and just enough by about the length of the football for a first down. Well, this is where reading defenses and practice time comes into play. You've got to know what you're running versus zone versus man and how to run the proper route. And they just executed that one pretty well. Now a give running left with Moss. 
scramble for about five, up close to the 40. Nice satisfying run on first down for the offense, picking up five, which means defensively, the thought process is entirely different. You don't want to panic, but at the same time, you're saying to each other, we've got to tighten this down. We can't give up gains like that. Now second and five. Right back to Moss. There he goes, right side. And he winds up getting this all the way down to the Jags 30. 103 yards for him on the ground now on 18 carries. Outside handoff to the right side. If you're a running back, you love getting the ball early, so you have vision to see what's happening in front of you. Right tackle, like said, call. Big play for him, but don't forget about the guys you always tell me on the backside sealing off. When they talk about cutoff blocks, making sure no one can leak from the backside that can run a play down. Yeah, nobody leaked. Big play. They go play action with Richardson. A short throw. This is caught by Cox, and he is out of bounds inside the 30. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And that'll bring up second down. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. They got to get to the 20 to keep the drive alive on third down. Operating from the gun, Richardson. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. And that could be one of those turning point plays in a ball game. A field goal gets you the lead here, but they want to make a statement and get six points. And they're certainly going to get that opportunity as they get the conversion and set up first and goal. tight end here on the running play. Trying to keep those big legs churning, but he's going to go down in the backfield. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time, because let's face it, you can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. Richardson working from the gun. The quick slant caught. Only three yards there on the completion. That'll lead to a third and goal. In today's football, where receivers break tackles, make people miss, <laughs> get upfield for the extra yardage, when you see a play like that where it's caught and he's dropped on the spot, that's a big-time play by the defense. Moss. What a stand so far defensively, and now that's going to bring up a fourth and goal. Offensively, not what they wanted there, but hey, you can kick the field goal here and take the lead. Felt like a little bit of a statement stop, didn't it? You know, made a big play right there. Okay, guess what? Ball's in your court, guys. What are you going to do? Myself, I kick the field goal, get the three, and take the lead. A field goal would break the tie, but look at this. Instead, they're going to go for it on fourth and goal. Oh, they'll run the option right. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Anthony Richardson scoring on the two-yard keeper. And the Colts' decision to go for it pays off with six points. And sometimes you just put it in the hands of your quarterback, let him take you home. And you just know the NFL playbooks nowadays have gotten just a little bit thicker because just about everyone has a quarterback run series involved now, and we just saw the evidence of it. Do defenses hate that? Drives them crazy because the quarterback is usually not a guy that runs with the football. You cover everyone else, and all of a sudden he waltzes in on you.
Sanchez now. He'll kick it away following the touchdown. From his end zone, here comes Agnew. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled it to 20. Here comes the Jaguars offense as they get set here. Well, partner, you know, coaches always say that every play is designed to score a touchdown. Sometimes that's not really true, but last drive, that was the case. One play to get into the end zone, and now they'll try to duplicate that success here. And it's rare for those moments to happen. Incredible when they do. And you saw the celebration. Pure, unbridled joy after that one. Throwing now, Lawrence on first down. A short throw to Ingram, and he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here, and what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while, get at least two first downs, give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Here's a second and five now from the 25. A give running right, ETN. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Call that a loss of a yard, and things get a little more difficult here, third and five. Well, that's not an easy play for a defensive end because most of his responsibility has him getting upfield and working. But how about his vision to see where the play was going, crashed down inside, and tackled him for a loss. Now Lawrence. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. I would dare say that these guys would have liked to have given their defense a little bit more rest since they gave up a touchdown their last time out. But alas, my man, that's not going to happen. Yep, they're going to have to grab those helmets, get right back out there. Here's Logan Cook now as he's on to punt for Jacksonville. Fair catch signaled for and taken just shy of the 30-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt, and that will come the offense as they take over. Indianapolis offense ready to go again. They have played so strongly. You look at the scoreboard, you, you probably, with the way they played, you would think the margin would be a lot bigger, right? You would, and in your experience, how many times have we run into coaches where they've talked about, hey, we just want to put it in the hands of our defense and have them win the game? In this case, yeah, not the case. Not at all. You want to put it in the hands of your offense, but you always feel better about seeing defense because you think defense is a constant and offense kind of comes and goes. Today, <laughs> this game, no, they need their offense to stay on a really hot level. They've been hot so far. It's another zone defense. It looks like it's open for possibilities, but they did a nice job patrolling the middle of the field and forcing an incompletion. Third quarter of a tight football game as we come up on a second and ten. Now it's Richardson. And that'll be off the mark too far out in front, and it's incomplete. But well, they approached this drive with a lot of confidence after the last one ended up as a touchdown. But incompletions on their first two throws has them huddling up and trying to figure out a big play here on third down to get their momentum going again. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Back to throw. Here's Richardson. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Moss. And he is stopped just short on third down. Got nine yards, but needed ten. Well, it looks like they got what they wanted. They got the completion, but they weren't able to break any tackles or gain nearly enough yardage to pick up the first down. Now to be fourth and short. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he's on a punt for the first time this afternoon. Five yards that time on the punt, and the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag, punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. 
And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end. A guy that you can line up anywhere, in the slot, out wide, in tight, doesn't really matter because he has such great skills, you want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. Now Lawrence, he completes it to Jones. And that's good for a gain of six, and that will bring up second down. And we've seen him have success earlier on with the ball in his hands because he has to get it in space and make a play kind of a receiver. But that time, they closed on him quickly and held him to a short game. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Ball spotted at the 45. Here's second and four. Back now in Jacksonville. It's Jaguar football, but a little work to do for them. They trail here as we start the fourth. And Kirk is going to have the Jaguars first down as he'll get this up to midfield. From midfield now, Lawrence. And his throw here is incomplete. And not a common sight, at least on this drive. A momentary setback, though, for this passing game that has been moving well this series. Good thing for them, though. Still two more downs to connect and try and pick up another first down. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Here's Lawrence. A short throw to Ingram. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. That was an okay hook up there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. The Jaguars on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This is third and eight. Throwing again here, it's Lawrence. And a throw there going to be incomplete. As a corner, you have to be able to run with guys step for step downfield and man coverage and make up ground quickly in zone. You have to put yourself in position to make plays just like that one we saw there. Here's Logan Cook now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And this will be up to the ruling of the side judge here. He says it crossed out of bounds at the 16-yard line. The Colts set to take over here offensively. Now, the previous drive they punted, but that was just the first time they've had to do so in this game. And when they turn on the game film, the coaches will rant about this, right? They'll say, oh, God, we got to move the ball, guys. We can't punt the ball away. But they have to keep smiles off their faces because that's the first time in the game they've had to do so. They've moved it quite well. They'll overall be happy with what they've seen. First and 10. Here's Richardson with it. Over the middle, hauled in by Pierce. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. That'll wind up a gain of 27 on the catch and run. Quarterbacks love slant routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision. And receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage. I couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game. First and 10 here. To the sideline, and that is a heck of a catch as he was able to get both feet in. Another big play as they get 28 out of that one. And these guys certainly are not hiding what their intention is. They're absolutely showing it. They're definitely not gonna sit on this lead here in the fourth quarter. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 as they've got it to the 28-yard line. From the shotgun, Richardson. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. It's a nine-yard pickup on the play, and it'll bring up a second and short. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet inbounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging a little tapestry if you will oh I like it oh no he lost 
the football, and the Jags grab it. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Well, partner, here's where team football gets tested a little bit because I know the defensive guys were up there chilling on the sidelines, and all of a sudden, they heard the sudden change call because that fumble puts them right back on the field, and they've got to go out and finish the game now themselves. Absolutely. Nursing that slim lead here in the fourth, a costly turnover. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And at this stage, in the fourth, they need to work this into the end zone. A field goal doesn't do much. We'll see if they can cash in following the fumble recovery. Here's the rookie from Auburn, Tate Bigsby. And they're going to get this all the way out past the 20. An ideal beginning of the drive there as they'll get 20 and a first down. Not too shabby for his first carry of the game. That's exactly what most teams are looking for. A really good change of pace back. Now they can breathe a little easier, some room to operate as they've got it first and 10 now out past the 20. Lawrence will throw. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. He'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. I do think it's fair to say that they were caught off guard a little bit. We decided not to throw it on first down. But give them credit. They recovered in time to deny him the first down yardage. But it's only second and short. So that run is still likely to lead to a new set of downs. On second down, a run with ETN. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Yeah, they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and 10. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. This is really impressive because when the offenses are running RPOs, things move very quickly. Fake, balls out of his hands, and they're trying to hit him in the gaps downfield. And instead, the defender reacts so well that he makes a play on it, and the ball falls incomplete. Looking to throw, Lawrence. Out route, he finds his man, it's Jones. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. He's been big. Two touchdowns earlier. Now he's got a first down here. I like the design that we're seeing right there. This is what they need. Down by a touchdown here in the fourth. They just need to keep working their way downfield. And when they see openings, take their shots. This one caught by Ridley. Now well, hang on here a second. Looks like a Jaguar in some obvious discomfort from that last play. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. Now a second and six. Now Lawrence, he'll connect on the out route with Ingram. That good for six as they keep this drive right on rolling. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 at the 45 yard line. Lawrence's throw taken in by Ridley here. Call it a gain of six on the play, and it's second down. Right there, he rose to the occasion late in a close game. It's something he thought about, dreamed about, and worked on throughout his career. Because in these types of situations, he wasn't going to allow extra coverage to keep him from getting the football. Lawrence going to throw again. And this one into the hands of Ingram downfield. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10-yard line. That one covers 29 yards, first down. 
And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage. So timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and 10. They'll send Kirk in motion right. And he'll get it here on the jet sweep. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. Defensively, they had that one pretty well figured out. Yeah, and one of the things about this play, it can be even more effective when you run a lot of motion and there's plenty of times you don't hand it off. Lawrence. And his throw is going to be incomplete. I know we spend a lot of time talking about how the defensive backs read routes and, and make plays on the football. How about a good linebacker feeling the route, seeing the quarterback, jumps the play, and knocks it away. Really well done. The Jaguars on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This is third and ten. Now Lawrence to throw. And that is caught. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Calvin Ridley, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Jaguars go nearly the length of the field and finish it off with six points. And we are set up for a fantastic finish now. A fourth quarter touchdown here. We're an extra point away from a tie football game. And I know they're thinking about possibly going for two, but I'd go ahead and kick this one and just get it back to level. Don't forget the extra point. It's up and good. And we are tied here in the fourth quarter. This one setting up for a great finish. All tied in the fourth as the kick's away. McKenzie will not return this, and it will be brought out to the 25. Colts football and Michael Pittman, helmet back on and ready to go. Let's see here, Charles. Six catches, over 100 yards. Call that a pretty good day at the office. And I love the accumulation. The catches, the yardage. That means he's having a pretty good impact on this ball game and really helping his team out in a big way. Means he wants the football again, right? And it's funny because some of these receivers are very vocal about how much they're getting it. Others are quieter, but they still let you know, give me the ball, I'm going to make a play. They'll start on the ground with Moss. And a short pickup to about the 27. It'll be second down. Offense looked a little bit discouraged after that play, shaking their heads a bit, looking at each other. I think they thought they'd get a lot more out of that call. Sometimes you do get the running lane you want, and other times, the defensive front, they just break up the play before it can get going. Quick throw into the hands of Pittman. That's good, the completion there for seven yards, and that'll leave him with a third and just a yard. Try and run the option to pick it up. Boy, no chance as he was met and dropped behind the line there. He lost two and it brings up four. Well, he's had success running the football in this one, and that's undeniable. But that time, the defense was on to it. And, partner, I think the more you see a play like this, the more they're able to diagnose it quicker and easier for them to defend it. I think you have to dress it up a little bit and show maybe some different formations and looks. As Sanchez on to punt here as he sends this one away. Call that a 44-yard punt, five on the return. Now here comes Jacksonville. We'll get another look at Zay Jones. When you're in a zone like he is, what's the conversation like on the sideline between he and his quarterback? Is that a one-way conversation of, hey, just keep getting me the football? It actually is probably a two-way conversation because he wants to keep getting him the football because he's seeing the payoff. 
You know, getting the ball to that guy means yardage, and as we've seen, touchdowns in this game. So I think both of them get more and more excited about the possibilities as things continue on. Yeah, so far it's been over 100 yards and the two scores. And they'll throw on first down with Lawrence. And that one could be off target and incomplete. He shook his head right when he released that throw. He knew it was going to be a little off target. Yeah, the excitement got him on that one. Wasn't able to control the fact the receiver was open, and it would have been an easy throw. Under four to go now as they come up on second down. Here's Lawrence to throw. And he overshot him there. It's out of bounds, incomplete. Ah, oh, that would have been a nice one to hit on in a tie game. You start to think that one big play, maybe the next big play, could turn out to be the game winner. They took the big shot, but it winds up incomplete. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. Out of the gun. They'll look to throw. Great vision there by Lawrence as he scrambles for a first down. Well, there you go. Save your best scramble of the day for a big-time situation in the fourth quarter, picking up the first. You don't want to use it up early, right? You want to make sure you save it for that exact moment, that key time. And that's what he did, although you and I both know it wasn't planned that way. But what a nice job using his eyes, scanning the field, and realizing when it was time to exit the pocket and go. Lawrence now off the bootleg. A quick throw there he is incomplete. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. And darn right. They did something to disrupt that timing. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. To throw again, Lawrence finds his tight end Ingram. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. His big game continues. Ten catches now and another first down. And partner in a tie game in the fourth quarter, you and I both know in the NFL, that's when you lean on your stars. And he came through with a nice catch right there. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and ten right at the 40. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. This could be the start of a nice stand from this defense now after getting walked backwards on this drive. Come through with another one here, and you have them staring at a third and long, and that puts the defense in a position to dictate to the offense. So second down and 10. Once again, they'll go from the 40. They'll send Kirk in motion right. Here's a fake on the jet sweep, and instead a give up the middle. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves them with third and nine looming. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You foresee incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? Well, this defense needing a stop here. Got to have it. Third and nine. And the pressure gets to Lawrence, and he'll go down. Samson Abuka in there to get him for a loss of nine yards, and that also leads to fourth down. Getting down to the good stuff, all tied with two minutes remaining on EA Sports. So it's Jaguar football here as we welcome you back. And they're looking at fourth down now in this tie ball game. Here's Logan Cook now as he's on for the fifth time here today. And this will be out of bounds. Now it's a question of where they'll mark it. And they'll say it crosses at the 11-yard line. Now the Colts offense gets ready to head back on the field. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there was a quick three and out, then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. This is first and ten. Now Richardson. And this one is going to be off the mark, too far out in front. Work with me, partner. Take a deep breath, because that's what they're doing down the field now. That incompletion allowed them to exhale a little bit. Get in the huddle, 
kind of scan the crowd, see if any celebrities are here. Relax a little bit as they start this big drive. Here's second down. Richardson. Going quickly there, but it's incomplete. So back-to-back -back incompletions now, third and ten. And first things first, before you think about marching the ball down the field, you got to move the chains. You're exactly right. Got to get back into focus here. Get the first down. That's what's vital to them. And the crowd a major factor now. Here's third down. Here's Richardson. And that is incomplete. Defense looking impenetrable now. Three straight incompletions. They're giving them nowhere to go with the football. Maybe a little frustrated back there. Oh, there's no doubt about it. When you've missed on three straight, there's going to be some frustration. But now he's got to make sure that that frustration is temporary, not lingering. Big throw coming up. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. And they call it 38 yards on the punt, no return. And now out come the Jags. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. They'll come up first and ten here. Here's Lawrence. And that went too far in front. He couldn't reel it in. It's incomplete. The way he's throwing the football today, almost a surprise when he doesn't complete a pass like happened there, but he needs a few more to get his guys downfield. Well, the way he's thrown it leads him to believe that he's going to get those completions, and that means the guys going out for passes, they'll run even harder because they expect it as well. Throwing now, Lawrence. Looking downfield for Jones. Oh, look at this. It's intercepted. Picked off by Juju Brents. And the Colts are going to take over at their own 11-yard line. Well, we say it often, Charles, but not all interceptions are created equally. And that is a big one here in a tie ball game in the fourth quarter. And Brandon, when games are this close, it usually comes down to the team making the fewest mistakes. And that was one of our mantras back at Tennessee. Coach Major say all the time, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. You've got to cut those down to give yourself an opportunity. Here's first down. Richardson to throw it. Pass complete to Allie Cox. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. Ah, uh, that's going to change things in a hurry. That shortens the field considerably, and now they're on the move. Three timeouts still at their disposal. Here's first and ten now. Here's Richardson. And his throw is incomplete. Under 50 seconds to play. Here's second and 10. Richardson looking to throw it. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as it'll come with 36 seconds to go in half number two. Two timeouts still at their disposal. Here's a first and ten now. Moss on the give up the middle. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts. 
as they'll stop it with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. Now second and four. They'll go again here with Moss. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. At this stage, you've got to hustle. You've got to get back to the line of scrimmage because you're saving that time out to make sure you have a chance to get your kicker out there for the big shot. A big play here as the crowd noise rises. Third and one. Here's a give to Moss out of the shotgun. And he's able to get the first here as he's taken down at the 25. So it all rests now on the right foot of the kicker, Matt Gay. And a timeout comes in. The whistles blow with three seconds remaining. And now this game's going to come down to the right leg of their kicker. With three seconds to go, this for the win. And this one is right through. And the Hoosier State will celebrate tonight as the Colts have won it. So this one winds up in Indianapolis.